So hi everyone, welcome to the R for Bioinfo. Today we have the great pleasure to have with us uh, Dr. Tatiana Tatarinova. Uh, so this will be an introduction to genome-wide association studies, she was. Uh, so uh, I will be presenting Dr. Tatiana Tatarinova. She's an associate professor uh, biology and Fletcher Jones Endowed Chair in Computational Biology. Uh, Tatiana's first degree was in theoretical physics, followed by uh, master and PhD in applied mathematics. Uh, she worked at uh, the Ceres as a computational scientist and then left the industry for academic career. Tatiana's focus is the development of algorithms for uh, data analysis. Thank you, Tatiana. So thank you for being part and for accepting our invitation and being, yeah, it's like our speaker today. Uh, so before letting Tatiana uh, start uh, this workshop, we'll introduce you to the Our Ladies Global and Our Ladies Tunis. So Mune, please, if you can share your screen. Yes. Is it okay? Yeah. Hello and welcome to this workshop session. Before starting the workshop, Can we you make introduce it you to the Our screen? Ladies Global and Our Ladies Tunis initiative. The Our community suffers from an underrepresentation of minority genders in every role and area of participation, whether as leaders, package developers, conference speakers, conference participants, educators, or users. As a diversity initiative, the mission of Our Ladies is to achieve proportionate representation by encouraging, inspiring, and empowering people of genders currently underrepresented in the R community and to facilitate individual and collective progress worldwide. Gabriela de Caros founded Our Ladies on October 1, 2012. Our Ladies Global was born and the grant was awarded in September 2016. Since then Our Ladies has grown to 170 chapters in 44 countries and 39,000 members. Our Ladies Tunis is part of Our Ladies Initiative and was created in May 2020 by women working as data scientists and biostatisticians and bioinformaticians. Our goal is to create an R community in Tunis and empower underrepresented genders in the R community. This is the core team of Our Ladies Tunis. Come and join our community on social media. This presentation was made with R Markdown. Thank you for watching this video and enjoy our workshop. Now, without waiting, so I will let Tatiana introduce you to the Genome Wide Association Studies. Tatiana, the floor is yours. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> so, can you? All right. So, uh, first of all, it's a great honor to be here. Uh, it's, uh, as a, of course, as a girl in sciences, it was always my mission uh, to break the stereotypes. So, um, uh, so, you know that I'm from Russia, originally from the Soviet Union. And uh, when I was an undergraduate student at my university, uh, in my class, I was the best student. And uh, they were, I was the only girl, and I was the best. So probably you can imagine what kind of gossips my classmates were spreading about me. So the uh, most uh, innocent one that I was sleeping with all the professors, that's why I was getting all A's. So and uh, needless to say, there was absolutely no foundation for those gossips. And, uh, um, uh, you know, I'm kind of, kind of uh, like very strong headed and uh, I couldn't care less about the gossips for me, it was just, okay, they're idiots, why they're spreading them. But I know that for many girls, uh, uh, they are more sensitive than I am because, you know, I'm a martial artist, I'm four degree black belt. For me, you know, gossips, I will punch you in the face, you know, just that, that's it, if you spread more gossips about me. But I understand that for uh, many girls uh, having, you know, uh, gossips uh, about them, it's a sufficient deterrent, you know, for not being uh, uh, working in a, in a sort of male dominated world. 
Um, so that's why I think it's it's a, uh, so important that you are doing it um, because uh, if uh, we make um, uh, a profession for data scientists, engineers, uh, and all a sort of traditional male professions uh, accessible to uh, women and minorities, not just accessible by law, but a place where they uh, feel comfortable psychologically and professionally, then it's, it's, it's super important. So I think that uh, if uh, I can make a small contribution to this, uh, I will be honored. So now um, back to the topic of uh, over the presentation. Uh, so guys, I hope you have um, your R uh, session ready because uh, uh, it's, not, it's not going to be just lecture, it's going to be hands-on workshop. So I hope you will be able to um, actually practice some, some of the skills. Since uh, we have um, uh, 46 uh, participants now and maybe more people will join later, I will not be able to help you with your code, but what you should do if something doesn't run and because sometimes not all uh, our packages are installable on all um, uh, uh, you know, versions of R. Sometimes they become obsolete. You know, it's it's a, it's a it's a free version. Uh, so it's some you know some there are conflicts of packages and versions of R. Uh, please uh, make uh, contact me. I will be able uh, to help you. I will be able to guide you. Help you uh, find the right version of the package, the right version of R installation. So um. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, we'll try to get as much as, as we can. And maybe if, uh, if there's desire, we'll continue because uh, there is no way I can uh, get through all the presentation today. So um, the first question, what is GLAS? And uh, probably as you know, um, and was a, a recent Twitter that we got today that uh, there were a Gen 1 association study uh, associating uh, some SNPs on human genome uh, with uh, severity of COVID, right? So that's, uh, uh, GWAS is super important. Is uh, For us, it's a way to find important position on the genome associated with traits of interest, okay? So uh, uh, we are potentially are finding either causative SNPs or SNPs that are associated or just located near the causative ones. So um, uh, it is um, important to explain uh, you know what nucleotides are uh, uh, responsible for, uh, for for traits, and uh, uh, we can um, further our understandings. We can understand the mechanism, and we can also possibly develop um, therapeutics. We can uh, develop uh, develop uh, breeding programs. Uh, so it's it's it is super super important, and um, we can also predict. Uh, behavior of a certain trait that is also important um, in order to predict, for example, uh, risk of a disease uh, for a certain individual and uh, maybe predict a phenotype, uh, for example, for a plant. So you will decide, uh, are you going to plant this particular variety in this particular situation, and knowing that, for example, you, you, some, you are not going to plant a uh, uh, not drought resistant plant in the desert. So, um, uh, uh, so in this case, uh, sometimes you can use it as a black box. You uh, you can uh, predict the trait. You don't need you don't understand um, what was going on. But uh, uh, overall, it's a it's a very important it's a very important area. So um, uh, uh, we are trying to find associations uh, between um, nucleotides on the genome and uh, and the phenotype of interest. Okay. So. Um, so in this case, uh, uh, the most common design we have, uh, you know, we have uh, uh, controls and the cases. So uh, 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 controls, uh, um, uh, you know, for example, if you have cases of certain disease, and uh, controls are health individuals, and uh, then you can contrast them in terms of compare um, uh, the nucleotide composition and see um, the nucleotides that are overrepresented in the cases group. So um, you can also um, uh, consider the heritability of certain traits, right? So we can find a uh, proportion of variable uh, variants ex uh, ex uh, explained by genetics. And in this case, uh, we can look at G, uh, genetic effect, E, and environment effect, and gene environment interaction term uh, given by uh, the multiplication term and uh, resulting, resulting in the phenotype. So um, uh, frequently we have um, mm, uh, uh, some, mm, so although, you know, as we say in Russia, an apple doesn't fall far from an apple tree. Uh, we have um, uh, uh, sometimes uh, we have, um, sorry, I have double slide. Um, uh, uh, there are missing heritability. So, uh, uh, so you have uh, offspring that is not um, 
uh, similar to uh, to parents, and uh, uh, it can frequently happen uh, because uh, um, there are uh, sufficient uh, gene environment interactions. So if you um, grow a certain um, crop in a different area, you can um, have a totally different expression of phenotype, and uh, also uh, there are such things like complex traits, uh, and there are variants that can play a role in development of um, uh, of different phenotypes. And also, we can um, uh, epigenetics uh, may play a sufficient role. So um, I'm also working uh, with a Malaysian Palm Oil Board, and earlier this year we have published a, a paper uh, describing uh, the uh, change uh, changes to epigenetic profile um, DNA methylation um, as a, a process as a result of process of cloning. Because as you know that. Um, uh, in uh, all, all palm, palm industry, uh, palms are, are, are clonally propagated in order to uh, maintain uh, the same um, uh, uh, genotype. And uh, but as a result, uh, some a certain percentage of, of the clones are having a mantled uh, phenotype of the fruit. That it's um, as a result, it doesn't have um, uh, much oil content. So this uh, plant uh, palms are just supposed to be removed and, and destroyed because they are agriculturally absolutely not interesting. Uh, but uh, and what we found out that uh, in the process of cloning, because it, it requires some hormonal treatment, uh, hormones uh, randomly remove uh, methylation from uh, entire genome. So uh, uh, clones are sufficiently less methylated as seedlings. And sometimes if you remove um, methylation from uh, areas that are supposed to be uh, methylated, uh, you get a, a transcript that I have maybe have a, a premature um, uh, stop codon that's supposed to be methylated before. So you have uh, uh, introns are not uh, being spliced and uh, as a result you get uh, bizarre uh, phenotypes that are uh, rendering plant uh, palms useless. And um, so uh, there are lots of um, uh, uh, you know, modifications to um, uh, uh, you know, pre pure uh, association uh, with the genotype. And uh, now there are also um, efforts to um, do not just uh, uh, genotype, GWAS uh, association, but also epigenetic uh, associations. So because of course there are multiple dimensionality, but uh, for us to start, we're going to look at the, the simplest possible cases. We are only looking, uh, going to look at uh, the association between uh, 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 um, genotype um, and, and phenotype. Of course, that, but you need to understand that's definitely not a complete story. So um, uh, there are several designs that are possible. Uh, first of all, it's case control. So you get uh, individuals that have certain trait and individuals that don't have certain trait, and, and you contrast them. And in this case, you have a, like a well-defined uh, trait. So um, you have like a built up plant, you have a healthy plant, and uh, then you can, you can compare um, uh, what um, you can find uh, what um, positions on the genome are associated uh, with the state of interest. And uh, you can also look uh, for known heritability cases, uh, but uh, frequently if you're, for example, working in um, in, sort of in, in environmental area and wild plants, so say Arbidopsis or Medicago, uh, we don't have case control, we have just a spectrum phenotypes, right? And um, in this case, we don't have uh, uh, this well-defined. So we have um, uh, quantitative phenotypic data uh, that some, somehow measured uh, from, from um, those individuals. And um, then uh, based on, uh, on this, we can also do, do some modeling, but it may be um, uh, more difficult uh, to quantify. So um, uh, then um, uh, what are the obstacles that are facing us? Uh, uh, there are things such as uh, population um, stratification. And um, uh, so if you look at uh, you know, uh, naturally occurring populations, what, uh, what you get uh, that uh, some of the uh, groups are going to be uh, different, not uh, as a, uh, just, just because of the genetic drift, right? And uh, sometimes it's, it is uh, 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 good for us, sometimes it's bad for us. So uh, uh, frequently the population stratification uh, that becomes apparent when you do, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, phylogenetic analysis, you, uh, you build, uh, have, uh, you know, trees, or you are doing a uh, principal component analysis, you can immediately see that you have uh, uh, distinct groups. And um, if you know that, for example, uh, these groups, um, uh, you know, were separated uh, in terms of um, the development, 
uh, you know, in a, in a timeline, then uh, you can see um, uh, when you uh, will do uh, the association study, uh, what you can uh, sometimes uh, pick up, you can pick up um, uh, the difference in evolutionary history between uh, the two groups and not necessarily um, the uh, SNPs that are responsible for the phenotype. So in this case, it's going to be uh, you know, it will, it will be hard, hard to dis distinguish between uh, the history and actually uh, the causative phenotype, causative genotype. And, um, but sometimes it's good because if uh, uh, it's not just a random drift, but it's also a local adaptation to um, uh, environment. Uh, and you have, um, uh, uh, say, this um, uh, uh, left and right groups. They will say uh, 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 reside in different habitats, for example, a desert area or a um, humid area, then of course, uh, they will be adapted differently. And um, we do want to take uh, this into account. We, we do want um, to use population stratification because uh, in this case, it's a naturally occurring one. It is uh, related to the phenotype. But uh, every time, in every case, it becomes a sort of a witchcraft. Uh, you cannot just look at the genome and have a column of phenotypes and just do blind analysis. Uh, you need to um, understand lots of metadata and you need to do lots of exploratory things. So um, uh, there are so many uh, currently tools for genome-wide association studies, but um, you can, a machine can crunch lots of numbers, but you need to understand, you need to study the data, you need to study the organism that is, uh, you are trying to um, run the GWAS for. And for this, the best uh, way if, uh, you are a mathematician, statistician, by mathematician. Uh, you need to talk to um, our wet lab colleague, uh, colleagues, to doctors, uh, to uh, breeders, uh, because they will be able to explain um, what is different between these two animals, plants, humans, and why um, when they maybe uh, they live in different places. So they need to take uh, this into account. You need to have uh, this, the history. So um, uh, you can also correct for this, uh, uh, you know, proof certification, or you can use it. Okay, so in this case, uh, be, be uh, uh, very um, uh, clear about uh, if you need to remove uh, this uh, naturally occurring separation of populations or you need to use it, okay? And uh, so one of the things, for example, it's possible to do, you can do um, uh, conduct regression on principal component analysis. So that's one, one of the possible ways. Uh, so another thing that's um, also, uh, you know, it's a good and bad, it's a linkage disequilibrium. So, um, so since um, uh, you know um, adjacent alleles are uh, not independent, and uh, the uh, length of uh, LD is a property of different organisms, and it, it, it varies for some uh, organisms. It's very short for some some organisms. It's long, and it should be taken into account. So when you um, in, in so in this case, it's a, a sort of a curse and a blessing uh, because. Um, uh, if you have uh, too much LD, then everything is going to be associated, and uh, uh, then it's going to be uh, your all your p values are going to be off, and um, and it will create too, too much noise. Uh, but uh, uh, some leakage is 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 beneficial. So um, uh, what do we need to do uh, for uh, to, to treat uh, LD? First of all, I have to do pruning, and uh, Plink works excellent uh, with this. So it's, you can do pruning using Plink, but you need to know um, for LD for the, the organisms that you are studying. And um, uh, then um, uh, uh, when you identify um, a SNP that is uh, highly associated uh, with the phenotype, uh, what you need to take into account that it's not particular position that's causative. It may be associated anywhere uh, along the LD. So uh, when you get the SNP, you need to scan uh, the entire range of a um, um, block and see where are the genes and maybe examine them using um, uh, a gene ontology analysis, CAG, and see which one makes more sense because uh, not necessarily the position that you identify is the causative position, but it's uh, linked uh, by LD to the causative position. Okay. So, but uh, LD allows us to use uh, marker SNPs and allows us to use um, um, SNP arrays. And uh, that's much cheaper, cheaper technology. And uh, without LD, uh, we will have to use only um, whole genome sequencing and that's going to be computationally uh, very hard. So, um, uh, there are multiple methods of, of, of GLAS. Uh, they can be um, uh, univariate or uh, multivariate methods. And um, 
of course, um, uh, univariate methods are very uh, straightforward, but uh, they are probably less, uh, less useful. Uh, and uh, uh, you compute individual test statistics. Oh, apologies, my dog is going to make a noise. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, because he's a bit of a wolf. Yeah, all right, sorry. Uh, so, um, uh, uh, so it's as simple as straightforward, but may not be as uh, as informative uh, for for the studies. And um, uh, so, uh, however, for understanding the basic principles of GWAS, uh, uh, individual um, univariate methods are probably or probably the, the easiest ones. And in this case, we are using a Fisher test uh, and a chi-square test and so forth. Um, and of course, when you do uh, so many testing and you're, you're dealing with thousands, uh, tens of thousands positions in the genome, you need to do uh, multiple testing correction and common methods are, of course, Bonferroni and um, power discovery rate corrections. So, um, uh, uh, if you are just studying uh, uh, to um, analyze uh, GWAS, you have to start uh, with, of course, univariate methods, and because they're straightforward and they are computationally extremely fast. But uh, when you do it, uh, you need to understand that this ease and uh, speed and uh, straightforwardness of uh, interpretation, um, they are, have certain weaknesses to come to cause because you are not taking into account the complexity of the model, okay? And uh, uh, sometimes effect size of individual SNPs are too small and you are not able to, uh, uh, to find them. So in this case, uh, if you have time today or we are going to uh, do it uh, during our next, uh, next meeting, uh, there are whole genome methods that um, uh, we have developed in collaboration uh, with the University of Toulouse and probably you know Laurent uh, Gesbittel and uh, Cecil Ben. Uh, so uh, we have a who gem method that takes into account whole genome, so you don't need to take um, to work uh, with individual SNPs. Uh, you can um, work with um, uh, the uh, admixture vectors instead. So you have a sort of, uh, as we say in physics, Thomas Fermi approximation. We have a continuous field, especially it works well for uh, naturally uh, natural organisms. And um, but uh, uh, univariate methods are a very good uh, good place to start. Okay, uh, and of course. Uh, uh, there are interactions, and if you look at interactome uh, map of, uh, of, any, of any organ, any cell, it's, it becomes a total, total, total mess. And, um, and of course, there are so many methods that are now uh, taking into account all genes at the same time. And, uh, uh, you know, there is no uh, time to focus at all of them. So we are going to focus only at some, uh, some specific subsets. So, but I hope it will give you a jump start because in many ways, and even in the way you prepare the data, uh, things are going to be um, uh, very, um, very similar. All right, so um, uh, now uh, we are going to start uh, with, uh, you know, the first, uh, you know, hands-on uh, exercise. It's a, um, um, RR blob package, right? So it's RR stands for ridge regression, and it's again it's an old method, and it's well established. It's, it's a kind of it's a, it's a bit obsolete, and um, so what does it do? It um, uh, so there are, uh, it was developed I don't know twenty years ago, so that's a it's a historic, it's ancient one, and since then there were so many better methods. But however, it's 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 very good. So it's a it's a good method to work uh, if you have data poor situation. So uh, uh, you have um, mm, uh, a number of observations limited, like I have, um, but uh, you have uh, lots of predictive variables. So in this case, uh, ridge regression is, is, is the way to go. So um, uh, there are, uh, I have pasted some references and some tutorials and they're excellent online resources. Uh, so please study them. Uh, it, they're going to be extremely, extremely beneficial. Uh, so what you do, you're trying to um, find uh, um, uh, uh, coefficients of a regression equation uh, on, on the right. So where um, uh, y is your data vector, is your phenotypes and uh, observed, and um, u is, for example, its overall mean. And um, so then you have a design matrix uh, that's uh, written here. And 
uh, uh, G is a genetic effect of a matrix, and E, of course, is an error because everything um, comes with a, 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 of course, with a biological error. We can put uh, all the different effects in, into this into this error. So, um, in order to do that, uh, so you need to uh, uh, install uh, multiple packages, and uh, you need to uh, uh, make sure that uh, all libraries are enabled. So, guys, um, so a question to you. Uh, so, uh, uh, do you have those packages installed? And uh, uh, if you have those libraries, so probably I can give you a minute. You don't need more. It's, I think it's quite fast, depending on your internet speed, but it should be quite fast uh, to um, upload those uh, libraries. And uh, um, so, in this case, okay, I have a typo here. Uh, it's supposed to be low case. I didn't correct it. So, uh, all the libraries are supposed to be low case. And uh, so please upload them. And um, uh, so just one minute, and then we'll, we'll continue because I would like you to um, actually do uh, the calculations uh, uh, together with me. Okay. Uh, Tatiana will post the command, you know, to install the packages in the chat. So yeah. we'll be posting this in the chat. Okay. Uh, do you have this in the uh, in the material? This, this is in the PowerPoint presentation. Yes. Okay. So it's in the part that we shared. Uh, Heidi, I will uh, I will take care of that. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mona. I will. Thank you. And then also we need uh, to um, um, download the data sets. So there are uh, five data sets uh, called uh, sativas. It's, it's uh, for, rice, um, for rice data sets. Uh, can you show us the data set? So it's in our GitHub yeah. and then yeah. we... Yeah. Okay, thank so, you. Yeah, so all of this, uh, so um, uh, all of the libraries um, and, uh, the and the data sets. Set. Yeah. Okay, yeah. we'll put the link to the data yeah. set. Yeah, so, uh, uh, so uh, do you think a minute would be sufficient or uh, we need more time for the, to download? Mm, yeah, maybe four minutes. Okay, so uh, yeah, let me know. Okay. Oh, <clears throat> sorry.
Liz, can you tell us if you are done installing the packages? Yeah, we need to know if you can move on for or not. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Tatiana, maybe you can explain, you know, the start explaining the data sets and... Uh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, please tell us in the chat if yes, if you mm -hmm. finished install the packages so Tatiana can start explaining the data set and mm -hmm. the script. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, uh, so uh, those of you who um, already um, um, uh, finished, we can uh, uh, use um, uh, this code to start processing the data. And uh, so this code can be found uh, inside the um, uh, slide deck, okay? And um, uh, so it's a step one when you just read data into R, okay? So uh, first of all, um, we need to find out what are those, uh, those data sets. So if uh, you uh, uh, did link before, uh, you will recognize that PED files are uh, standard files in the Plink format, okay? And um, so um, then we need to do uh, some conversion uh, because, oops. Um, You do conversion because uh, the mm, the data uh, that um, the association study take they are not the same uh, data format that we have on Plink. But fortunately, we have conversion, and um, so uh, but uh, so we need to do some manual processing to uh, to convert. So um, uh, we take our traditional uh, 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 Plink formatted data, PET, uh, farm, and map, right? And uh, then we need to create a, like a Gino uh, data frame, right? And in this case, we recode um, the data and we convert the data into metrics, okay? And we need to transpose it. So, yeah, so unfortunately, uh, not uh, uh, different programs uh, produce data in, uh, in different forms, okay? So uh, what we have on this uh, slide is taking the data for, as an output of Blink, that you most likely get as soon as you uh, you do your processing, and record it into the format acceptable for uh, for the program. So in, in, in order to do this, you don't really need any of um, uh, of the packages because this part is just a plain vanilla. Uh, uh, data processing, uh, you can use it using only like basic, uh, uh, almost basic write -like packages, except for, I think, for the read pad file. That for this, you need, um, uh, you know, you need, you need packages. Okay, uh, so what's also important here, uh, the, on the second line, uh, there is a, a set uh, wd command, okay? So uh, it is an important command because uh, R is looking at the data in a certain directory. So when you save uh, PED, uh, farm, mob, uh, and phenotype files into a directory, make sure that you are pointing your R to this, uh, to this directory. Otherwise, R will not find your data, okay? So in this case, it's, it's, you can either type command set working directory, or you can do it from, uh, if you're using RStudio, you can do it from the um, drop-down menus uh, for a set, uh, for the session set working directory. Whatever works for you, um, it doesn't. It does, doesn't matter. As soon as you point your uh, working directory to the location of your files. Uh, Mune, can you send the link, please, of the data set? Uh, it's on. It's on GitHub. Um, yeah, it's on our GitHub. But Mune will take care of that. Mm -hmm. Uh, Tatiana, please, can you yes. uh, yeah, so explain the pet file? What's a pet file, farm, and map? Oh, okay, guys. Okay, so guys, you uh, you haven't done Plink, right? No. Oh, I okay, don't okay. think, so, uh, yeah, I know. All right. Okay, pet file. Uh, so, okay, let's uh, start with farm file. Farm file is the easiest one. Uh, farm file, uh, uh, maybe what I'll do, I'll just, I'll uh, I'll share a different screen. I'll just open uh, uh, my uh file in there. Okay, give me a second. Right. Okay. Right. 
So, um, uh, Sorry, Mason, that you're showing the screen. We see the R Studio screen. Yes, I'm trying to move it. It, says, it, doesn't, it doesn't move too well. A portion of it. <laughs> yeah, I think I changed the range. Okay, so when you, um, uh, a Gino file, okay, is, um, so it's a, it's a, it's a uh, pet file. Pet file contains genotype information, okay? And um, so, uh, so in this case, it's a, it's it's, a, it's there are multiple ways of coding. Sometimes you can um, have a genotype uh, data coded as a um, uh, uh, zero one two uh, three. It can it can uh, call them as um, alleles, right? And that's, that's uh, so maybe you can share, you know, uh, show the files if you not the R Studio the, the right. files. Okay. All right. So okay, they okay. can understand better. Sorry. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. Oops, again, I lost again. Yeah, now we can see better. Yeah. Okay, so see, wait, see, do you see my entire uh, file? Yeah, we can see the notepad. Okay, good. Yeah, so um, uh, so this is a typical pet file. Okay, so what does it mean? So uh, uh so you have um uh, sample information and uh, metadata in the first uh, columns, and then you have uh, nucleotides. So uh, so each position you have two nucleotides. So in uh, uh, showing your uh, so in, in two. you can also code it in terms of uh, uh, genotypes, right? So, uh, but um, okay. Mm -hmm. okay uh, so you can uh, store it in um, in a in a in a binary format. And or you can also store it in a text format. Of course, uh, when we do um, uh, association study, it's much easier for us to store data in uh, in a binary uh, in, a, in a numeric format, not in terms of um, alleles, right? So uh, uh, you can have uh, 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 you know I, I just in uh, so if I'm missing data, it's two uh, zero one and three um, are uh, telling you if it's um, uh, you know. Uh, you have uh, reference alleles and you have uh, homozygous, you have uh, alternative alleles, homozygous, and or you have, um, you know, uh, uh, heterozygous status. Uh, so if uh, we look at uh, uh, the 
a phone file. Sorry, Tatiana, for interrupting you. You no. are not the full screen. So, uh, okay, so I'll show you. Let me do the new share. Stop sharing. Okay. And, uh, Okay, uh, do you see my screen now? Yes, this is a phone file. Yes. Okay, so, uh, so yeah. a phone file uh, gives you a list uh, of individuals in, in your case. Okay, so there are, uh, there are IDs of, uh, of individuals here. And the last file that we, uh, we look at is, um, is a map file. Okay, do you see the map file? So the map file uh, uh, contains um, a chromosome number, uh, SNP ID, and uh, the last one is uh, the position. So uh, these are the three um, uh, files that uh, describe your, uh, uh, your SNP data. And now we can go to, to the R screen. Okay, uh, do you see my R studio? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so um, uh, uh, you can read the genotype into, um, uh, into R, right? And it, uh, uh, you can, uh, it converts um, the data into um, the numeric format. And a uh, form file also, um, you can read it into R. So you have the same as uh, as I showed in in um in the notepad, and also had. You can look at the top of uh, the map file. Okay. Okay. So um uh, uh guys, please uh, uh uh type in the chat. So have you done installing the packages and downloading the data? So um, then what we need to do, we need to um, uh, change the notation because um, different programs have different um, assignments. So uh, you, uh, uh, you do this, uh, it seems um, recording of um, uh, notation because it's a, in, um, uh, in order to for use in, um, uh, in the rigid regression, you need to have, um, uh, a missing data is supposed to be an A, not two, right? And uh, uh, so uh, genotype three is supposed to be two. So you, you do this uh, change, uh, changes of uh, regression. Okay. Um, so let me... Okay, so I'm gonna change it here. Okay. 
Mm. Okay. So now um, our uh, genome form is um, uh, in a, uh, now we need to make it is into matrix, right? So because so far it's a like one long list and uh, this command makes sure that it arranges as a, uh, 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 as a, as a matrix. So because uh, you need to put the matrix. And then we transpose the matrix, okay? And we have a matrix that has 413 rows that's equal to the number of individuals and it has 36,000 SNPs. So 36,000 columns that correspond to the positions. So uh, please tell me guys, if you have, uh, if you have done this. Tatiana, do yeah. you have this script in the- uh, Yes, the script is, uh, yeah. Uh, so for the script R, right? That you can just copy paste, right? Class GWAS dot R. Yeah. Okay. Let's get to there. So guys, do you see my presentation now? Mune, the script is the class gwas.r. Yeah, yeah, but do you, see my, uh, do you see my presentation now? Yeah, we see, but uh, you know, the upper part uh, isn't uh, like full screen. So we see oh my God. the whole, the whole R studio and the, yeah, it's a small part, so. It's crazy, it's not telling me what I'm sharing. Okay, let's do once more, okay. Your screen. Yeah, maybe yeah, it's better not to show the, yeah, it's good. This one is good. <laughs> yeah, so it's when switching, it's, it's, get, it's getting confused. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so guys, uh, have it, uh, so hey, did you run this uh, step one? So please, the script, you can download the script from our GitHub and then follow the instructions. Okay, so uh, some people are typing yes, so they installed it, uh, okay. Okay, so let's continue. So then after step one, step one was uh, reading SNPs into R and converting them to the format uh, that are going to be acceptable by the program, okay? So for step two, we'll be reading the phenotype data and uh, processing the phenotype data. So uh, if uh, you look at the uh, table uh, sativas for 113.pheno, uh, it contains uh, lots of phenotypes. Okay, and um, uh, what we can do, what we can do, uh, we can uh, choose any of, the, any of the traits that we want to analyze. So uh, what I would like you to do after you, we are done with this example, I would like you to uh, choose another column because there are so many of them, okay? And uh, run the same procedure using another variable. Okay, and uh, so uh, because my uh, our goal is not just to look at the lecture, but to learn how to do it on your own. And uh, if you are experienced with R, you probably know that if you are trying to understand a new package, the first thing that you do is just follow the manual. Then you make one small tweak, then two small tweaks, then three small tweaks, and then you become a master of this package. So at first we are going to follow uh, the, um, the manual, 
uh, this was um, a manual was developed by my colleagues at ERI, International Rice Research Institute. So, um, uh, uh, so that's uh, uh, it. Need, in this case, it works. I know the data. I played with them. We have published several papers together. So I know it's good data. So uh, any of the columns are going to be uh, excellent, and it will also give you understanding which of the traits are uh, easier to um, be uh, pre uh, uh, analyzed using uh, uh, this package and which of the traits are not giving you any significant p-value. So maybe uh, you need to use other tools and other methods to analyze them. All right, uh, so, um, so what do we do in this step? So in this step, uh, first we are just reading uh, the uh, phenotype data. And then what we can do, we can take a look at, uh, at the phenotypes and just uh, to see the first uh, five rows and five columns, right? And um, uh, then uh, what we need to do, we need to um, uh, 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 make sure, uh, uh, put them together uh, and uh, compare the uh, rice uh, phenotypes uh, uh, put it together with um, uh, with our SNP data, and uh, our Y is uh, is going to be uh, our uh, response variable. So you can find this code in there. So you don't need to copy from um, uh, uh, from uh, the PowerPoint. You can find this code inside R. Uh, Tatiana, in yeah, the step yeah. one, yeah. Uh, step one, yes. Uh, yeah, at the slide. It's like, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so you said we transpose the matrix. Yeah. Uh, what is it? T. Yeah, Gino is equal to T of Gino. You see, it's a, 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 a the um, line before last. Ah, okay. So why do we transpose the matrix? Uh, because it, uh, that's a, that's a, a requirement uh, for it's a way uh, because uh, in a, in a, uh, in a, in the Gino file we have um, uh, you know, uh, individuals and SNPs, right? Mm -hmm. And. Uh, uh, so uh, we need to make uh, sure that, uh, you know, what you have uh, rows and columns, right? Yeah. Individuals and snips. So if, um, okay, so um, uh, if we go back to R, right? So it's, because it's going to be, a, um, so uh, you need to, uh, so you, you need to have in row names, then uh, you need to have individuals, right? Yes. But if you uh, if you don't transpose, you're going to, your own names are going to be SNPs. SNPs, yeah. So, but that's why you have to flip it around. So, guys, have you download? Uh, have you uploaded uh, them? Uh, uh, so, you've downloaded and processed the uh, phenotypes. Table. And please ask questions if you don't yeah. understand something. Actually, I'm asking questions for them so they can understand things. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, and this one, uh, um, uh, when you uh, say use the first trait, so I would like you to practice and use other traits after we are done with this because it's super important for you to understand uh, what's going on. Use other traits, okay? So let so me uh, talking uh, about uh, rice dot phenol. Instead yeah, right. of one to five, you can use yeah other columns for that. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, guys, uh, do you see uh, my screen? Uh, so this is the CSV file on the, on the screen or not yet? This is the step two. We see the step two. Oh, step two. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how many columns uh, in the dot .feno file, Tatiana? Uh, we can count it right now. So you see that it's a lot, right? Yeah. So I think it's about 30 something, but uh, let me, uh, we can check, I'll show how to check it, okay? So there are all the, all the interesting phenotypes here, okay? We can check it in R with the gym yeah. function, right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I'll show it right now, okay? Go to okay. Oh, yeah, do you see my uh, my R script? Uh, no, we see the uh, it's a word file. Office, okay. not the R. Somehow it's just a, the Zoom behaves strangely. I don't know why it behaves this way, but I'll be okay. Change it once more. Okay. Do you see my, uh, yeah, this is? Okay. Yes. Yeah, okay, good. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yeah, but you know the console, and can you make it bigger? Okay, oh, yeah, so it doesn't fit. Uh, it's not bigger, just so it doesn't fit the screen. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, no, the, we see. Yeah, the console. It's better to see uh, the upper part. Yeah, but I, I, I want okay. to show this. Uh, yeah. yeah, the console. Okay. Okay. I cannot. Dot feno. Okay. So there are 38 different traits. Uh, no, so no, no, because it's a, yeah, so 36, yeah, 36. Yeah, so you have um, uh, uh, first two um, roles are IDs, right? And then I have lots of different traits. Okay, so uh, uh, we are going to be practicing with the first one, but 
we can do any of them, right? So uh, if you want to practice, practice with the data set. It's, it's a very nice one. Okay. Okay, so. Um, Maybe you can show them an example. So because yeah, yeah, some yeah. are not so familiar yeah. Yeah, with R. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so uh, we process, uh, first of all, Y, right? So that's our flowering time. So if you uh, just hit Y, what we get, uh, uh, you know, a range of flowering times, it just becomes a vector. For some of them is missing, you have the missing data. Okay. So an A, it means that it's not there. Okay. And um, uh, so, uh, and then uh, well, in line 71, what we do, uh, we identify those Ys that are not an A, so they're not missing, because we need to remove, we, we don't want to use um, uh, a rigid regression for something that's missing. It's uh, it doesn't do, do, do any good. So uh, we identify everything that's, um, that's, uh, that's okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And, uh, So now, uh, so what we have, um, uh, we have 374 uh, tables. So um, uh, now we need to do even more processing because we need to um, uh, remove uh, poor performing alleles that is um, very rare, right? And um, so and uh, we save it as a new um, uh, uh, as a new uh, data frame. So after uh, we process and we remove uh, the rare SNPs, uh, we can look at the new data and uh, and the old data. So as before, we have three hundred seventy four individuals, but after cleaning the metrics. We have uh, we lost about uh, three uh, three and a half thousand SNPs. So these three and a half thousand SNPs are poorly performing, either because uh, 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 you know something is missing, and uh, and uh, either it's a rare SNP, so it's something we uh, we want to exclude it from analysis. Of course, I'm not uh, claiming that uh, rare SNPs cannot be uh, important, but for um, the first. Uh, way approximation, it's it's good to look at something that is not too rare, that may be uh, appear due to um, uh, sequencing error. So uh, uh, we've done this. So we are, uh, have prepared, uh, we have prepared the data. So it, it is um, annoying. It's, uh, I know that's uh, uh, not very, not very pleasant procedure, but uh, the first rule of bioinformatics, garbage in, garbage out, so it's uh, uh, it's important to uh, process the data. Okay. Uh, so we already um, uh, read the map file, so it is there. Okay, and because it has information about all SNPs that we have originally used. Remember, now we have reduced, we have removed three and a half thousand positions. So now we need to create a new web file that is going to we need to exclude all positions that we have excluded at the previous step. Okay. So now our map file is good. So unfortunately, that's not the end of it. We now uh, we need to um, uh, uh, do the more transformations and uh, make sure that uh, the format of our data corresponds to the input format. All of this, uh, so we have we are doing two things at the same time. First of all, we are formatting our data from original blank format to satisfy uh, the input requirements of the package. And that's the most annoying part of R, when one tool has input and output that not compatible with another. That's frustrating. But uh, uh, unfortunately, so, so fortunately, unfortunately, as you know, R is a is free, and uh, people are doing packages because it suits their needs, right? And it suits their commands. And when you need to use them, so the package that you work with, they may have output that is not uh, the output uh, that uh, or the input for of the 
program that you're going to use. So you have to uh, make all these conversions. So it's a, a necessary evil, a necessary result of uh, uh, the quick development and uh, open access to all the codes. Okay. So all of this, you know, we are, we are cleaning the data, we are removing poorly performing positions, and we are changing the formats. Okay. And finally, finally, we will prepare the gene metrics. And there is a command uh, that is going to uh, uh, now create uh, the object that will be stored in the file 44k GDS. And um, uh, it will be uh, uh, using our matrix uh, of uh, genotype genome one, a list of samples, list of SNP IDs, right? List of chromosomes and uh, positions and all, uh, all the specifications. Okay. So fortunately for this one, ah, because I already have this file, I can maybe uh, call it in 21.1, okay. Because I cannot rewrite it because I already have it, okay. So you will not have this. You will not have this issue uh, because uh, you, uh, uh, you 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 didn't create this file before. Okay. So you created the file. Okay. So when you open it up, okay. okay. So you will um, uh, uh, you will get description. So uh, total number of samples, total number of positions. Okay. And um, uh, then the first thing to do, if you remember uh, uh, the beginning, we need to do principal component analysis. Okay, guys, please type in the window. Are you familiar with the principal component analysis? Okay. Okay, and uh, so please type also in the window, uh, in the beginning, uh, we explain why before doing GWAS, we need to do PCA. So uh, what, did, what did we stipulate? Why are we doing PCA? Tatiana, maybe we, you can explain briefly what's PCA okay. for those who yeah. don't know. Yeah. So a uh, 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 principal component analysis, yes, absolutely correct. Yeah, with reverse certification. A uh, principal component, because uh, we need to visualize our SNPs. So now we are dealing with 44,000 markers, of course, reduced by now 35,000 markers, but still you cannot visualize 35,000 markers. It's absolutely impossible. So what do you need to do? Uh, you need to somehow, uh, because not uh, all um, the positions are important, not all the positions are explaining the variability between your data set, uh, but what you uh, need to do, you need to uh, sort of somehow reduce the dimensionality, you need to uh, uh, maybe represent the variability to find uh, the axis that uh, you're rotating your axis in, from, uh, 35 dimensional space, uh, you are, uh, and it, you, you are, your first axis is going to be direction of the biggest change, and your second uh, axis is going to be direction of the second biggest change, and so forth. So in order to visualize your, um, uh, your data set, you can uh, look at the first few components. So basically you are reducing dimensionality in order to visualize the structure. So PCA, it's what, uh, like the same as uh, MDS, is a dimensionality reducing technique, okay? So um, uh, let's take a look at it. So in this case, it's, it's done quite quickly. It's a very efficient um, tool. And uh, Mm 
Okay, guys, do you see my window? Do you see the PCA plot? Yeah. What does it look like? So what do you see on the plot? But we don't see which PCA, so we see the points, only points. Oh, this is the points, right? I mean, yeah, we don't see if it's PCA one, PCA two. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now we say. Okay, this is how much it's squished. Zoom. Okay, so it's squished. Yeah, good. No. All right. All right. All right. So, um, what is missing here? So, what is uh, making this not very use uh, 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 useful? So why it is not very useful? So what is uh, what is preventing us? So why why it is so bad? So what information do we need to add here? Yes, please type your suggestions. Uh, uh, why it is not very interesting? So it is triangle, right? So there are some points. So what uh, what you would like to see there? Labeling, yes, of course. We want to see labeling populations, yes. And not label population, we can, um, uh, uh, in a, uh, another file, a CSV file, there's information about uh, populations, okay? So we can uh, extract the population information and uh, we can, uh, using command C bind, we can uh, uh, add population information, okay? Uh, Tatiana, for those who don't know, what's the Egan value? It's like briefly. Okay, you know. okay. okay. Thank you. Okay, let me uh, uh, zoom in on the plot and then I will talk about uh, principal component analysis, okay? So um, uh, if when you do principal component analysis, uh, so, um, you probably, uh, uh, when you're uh, back at the university, you studied a bit of linear algebra, right? So probably you had it, but uh, uh, usually you have it uh, during your first year at undergrads and then you forget it as a nightmare. But what uh, you should remember from uh, linear algebra that we were using matrices, right? And for matrices, we were finding eigenvectors and eigenvalues, okay? So eigenvectors and eigenvalues are telling us, uh, so eigenvectors uh, are direction of the most important directions in the matrix. And eigenvalues uh, are telling us the strengths of this direction. So if you're talking about, uh, for example, matrix of winds, right? And you have a very strong wind like, uh, from uh, north to south, right? So your eigenvector of the wind is going to be a vector from north to south. And uh, the eigenvalue of the wind, of this matrix of winds, is going to be the strength of the wind, right? Okay, in sort of kilometers per second, okay? So does it make sense, guys? So imagine the wind, and if wind is a matrix, because it's, uh, it's, we have uh, different winds, uh, so the, because it can blow from left and right at the same time. So we have a major direction showing us the direction of the wind. And all other uh, can be ignored. So this is sort of, a, uh, sort of um, how we do principal component analysis. We um, identify major forces, but what are major forces for us here? So first of all, uh, when we have all the SNPs, all variability, you're talking about variability. <clears throat> and in this case, it's kind of a marriage between statistics and genetics and linear algebra. So we take a matrix uh, of um, SNPs and we calculate uh, a variance, covariance matrix or correlation matrix. So in this case, on diagonals, there are ones, right? And of all the all diagonal elements, 
are going to be correlation coefficients, like in this case, Pearson correlation coefficient uh, between um, uh, uh, two elements. What uh, uh, in this case are going to be uh, uh, SNPs. So what do you do next? Ne then you do uh, try to find eigen vectors and eigenvalues to find uh, the direction of the biggest change, right? So the biggest change in, in your system. And uh, so in this case, what are going, we're going to have along the biggest uh, direction, you're going to have all the SNPs that are giving you the biggest input, right? And they're coming with certain weights, okay? So the eigenvalue is going to be the variance explained by this combination, okay? So yeah, uh, uh, and if you rotate your system along the say PC1 and PC2, then uh, you're going to have along the first uh, axis, you're going to have the, the biggest change in your system, right? So yeah, along the PC1, you change from here, where we have green elements to, uh, we have right elements, we have uh, aromatic rice, right? And um, along the PC2, it's the second most important. So the biggest change can happen along PC1, then, uh, second biggest change happens along PC2, and then PC3, PC4, etc. So usually we don't need to keep all our principal components. We uh, need to keep uh, only uh, if uh, cumulatively they explain 90% of the variance. So the rest are probably not important. In this case, each principal component is a linear combination of everything, but uh, some important steps come with high. Uh, coefficients and not important SNPs come with low coefficient. I mean, they they uh, even can be ignored for uh, for this. So it's a way to find the most important, important linear combination of the most important things in your system. Okay, so uh, that's what you do for the principal component analysis. And now you can see that oh yeah, oh we have um, uh, different. Uh, uh, varieties of rice grouped in different corners. You have indica in the some corner, of course, uh, you have aromatic rice in another corner and uh, the hybrids are black dots. They are in between as they're supposed to be, okay? So uh, uh, PC is excellent for visualization, but it has a certain issue. It always gives you a triangle and there are always uh, distortions, especially if there are some geospatial structure, you can have uh, sometimes uh, a principal component analysis forming a cur curves, and it's not going to be very useful. Uh, so uh, the value of principal component uh, may not be used very efficiently for prediction, but uh, because of the curvature structure and there's no linearity. But um, uh, to, uh, to visualize a grouping, it is a very good approach. Okay, so uh, after we, do, uh, uh, we, uh, we are done uh, with, uh, with the visualization, we can move to um, uh, uh, further analysis. So we can, uh, for example, uh, add uh, the data to, um, to the plot and uh, uh, using the digiplot function, we can put our data on a map. It will be a while until it processes. Oops. So what does the script of the ggplot? Yeah, so this, uh, this script is, uh, is plotting um, things on, uh, oh no, I think it's got so long. So, long. Yeah. Uh, so we are plotting, it's, it's, it's optional just for uh, for beautification, just showing it's a, it's a ggplot is, is, a, uh, is a crazy, uh, uh, crazy use of oh, long. Is it? Okay, so it's, it's long. Yeah, long, I think, I think it's, let me see. Okay. A country. Mm. 
Oh, I didn't change the, the variable names. Okay, my bad, my bad. Uh, let's see. So this is three, four. 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 I guess I missed, I missed a step here. Okay, location here. Oh, yeah, okay. Mm. Okay. Yeah, so I have a typo in this code, so I've had um, CA1, okay. Okay, I'll send you the correct code uh, later. So I, I made a typo here. So that's just uh, so erase something in the moment. But what we get here, let me show you um, the slide. So we have a new share. Okay. Let me visualize it here. Mm. Maybe you can stop sharing, then share again. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I even I can control my Zoom. I don't have a um, uh, I don't have a Zoom uh, sharing screen. Oh, okay. Oh yeah. Maybe oh yeah. Oh, I, found I it, yes. have to make you co-host. You, you're already okay, co-host. I got here. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Zoom is not behaving uh, nicely to me today. Can share. Okay. All right. Okay. Do you see my screen? Yes. All right. So if you do a visualization, then um, uh, what you get, uh, you get two um, possible uh, plots. One, uh, the one we did here. Uh, you know, uh, dividing uh, the aromatic uh, and uh, so forth as into categories, and then you can also. Uh, Put them uh, onto uh, onto a map, so map of the world using using the uh, ggplot command, and uh, I will make sure I will correct the typo that I, that I made there. Um, so um, 
what does it tell you? What does the structure tell you? If you look at both plots at the same time, guys, if you can type in, in the chat, what do you think is happening here? So what do you see if you look at a, a PCA plot on the right? And if you look at the map on the left, what do you see? Maybe you can uh, show uh, what uh, what would be a conclusion. about the uh, uh, you know uh, geographic distribution of genotypes okay it's very nice with the variants so um are they geographic clustering so uh, is it uh, clear that you know if all the purples are together all the greens are together all the orange are together so so do we have a, a clear geographic clustering? So yes or no, okay. So if uh, a geographic clustering is uh, strong uh, and, uh, and evident. So just a type case, okay. uh, there is no right or wrong answer. What do you think? It is a subjective. Is geographic clustering well-defined? No, okay, no. Okay, good, 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 good. So actually, the answer is both yes and no. Why? Because if you look here on, the, as I say, in America, and look here in uh, in Asia, so we do see some sort of clustering, right? But at the same time, uh, there is a admixture of other species. Yeah. So uh, uh, things are sort of they are geographic clustering because they are preferred varieties of rice in each area. But also there are other things. So, uh, because rice can be, seeds can be bought anywhere and moved around. Compared to, um, say, wi uh, wild uh, plants like Arabidopsis, Medicago, that no one is actually planting anywhere, rice is a commercial crop and being moved around. And where it grows, it doesn't necessarily mean uh, the place where it would grow naturally. Okay? So, um, uh, and it's not necessarily the place that's best for it. So in, in this case, for breeders, it's an opportunity because if a, a plant grows in the area that's not really best for it, uh, it may be uh, doing well or maybe it's not doing so well because it's not adapted to the specific, uh, specific area. So that's why we need to uh, uh, see if there's a, a correlation between uh, latitude and longitude and performance of the plant. So in this case, we can do it just by uh, a simple correlation coefficient analysis. Okay, and finally, uh, the, uh, what we do is um, uh, we uh, 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 run the GWAS. And uh, after all the preparation, the GWAS is just simple three commands. So first of all, you prepare the, uh, the data frame and uh, uh, you prepare the data frame for uh, markers, the data frame for uh, uh, phenotypes, and you run uh, GWAS, and you save it into frame my GWAS, and you put uh, the uh, set of phenotypes, uh, set of genotypes, you set a uh, mean map, but the problem is not necessary because we've already made this, made this cutoff. In this case, we are not, uh, we can uh, set uh, uh, a computation of variance uh, uh, individually or not, and uh, the plot is true, it will produce a plot. And what we'll get, uh, we'll get uh, um, what's called Manhattan plot. And uh, it will give us, uh, uh, if it's above the line, because on a, uh, on a, a y-axis, we have a negative uh, logarithm of a p-value. And the smaller p-value, the more significant the effect, because we are testing the model, and the null model, it, that uh, association is purely spurious, and it's to be expected. An alternative is uh, that uh, association is non-random; you can't uh, expect occur by chance. And p-value is probability that this effect or more uh, significant is going to occur by chance. So in this case, we have the SNP that is um, um, definitely uh, above the cutoff. And if uh, we go to uh, SNPSEQ, uh, to ERI, 
and we look at chromosome six and we uh, check at, uh, the phenotype uh, for flowering traits at QTLs. And what we see here on the chromosome six, so we see multiple um, uh, uh, QTLs for flowering. And even this a very simple, very simplified, very straightforward analysis found this QTL. The question is why we didn't find other QTLs, but you know, uh, no tools are perfect. But, uh, and also we look only uh, one specific flowering time in Arizona. So that's maybe not very universal, but the good thing is that we found, so what we found actually corresponding to uh, uh, what uh, ERI highly accurate SNPSIC database is showing us. Okay, so um, what uh, I would like us to do now. So first of all, try to finish it up and uh, I will uh, update the code. And second, choose any of the traits. Choose any of the traits and uh, do the plots and paste in, uh, uh, and share with us. You can just uh, uh, send it to us, your plots of a PC, of a, um, uh, um, uh, Manhattan plots for the traits. And maybe if you can also go to Erie and check if uh, your um, uh, uh, traits correspond to something that was found before. And uh, we'll try to help you uh, with, with this analysis. So guys, if you have any questions, uh, please ask them. So, but try to practice because it's important to practice on your own. Questions? Guys, please ask questions. Is there any part you didn't understand or? Yeah, we can go over any of the parts. We can go back to any of the slides. But try to uh, try to uh, try to run it on your own. Try to write uh, uh, finish up this uh, um, uh, either for um, this flowering time in Arizona or pick any other trait. Pick any other trait, and uh, Tatiana, we have a question here. Sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So Sofia is asking, how would this work for rare alleles with lesser frequency? Yeah, it's a, it's a, all, 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 all depends uh, on on the on the strength of the effects. So, um, so uh, so that's why um for their uh, so usually when you, uh, when you look for for QTLs, uh, you um. There are, there are multiple methods, and some methods are uh, better performing for uh, uh, rare alleles with strong effects. And uh, but um, different different stati statistical procedures are suited for for different ways. So um, 
And so, uh, in, uh, so the best this best practice so far is to try all different tools, all different methods, and have a sort of ensemble learning. It's a, it's a, now the same strategy as we do for uh, using, say, for genome annotation. So uh, each program is uh, suited best for um, uh, some uh, specific performance. And uh, but what we do, we um, run multiple programs, either predicting genes or predicting SNP variants, and then uh, we are ranking each SNP based on uh, its ensemble vote. Because uh, yeah, for some tools that are um, suitable for uh, finding um, rare alleles, uh, they may not be found by other tools. So, uh, but they, the score is going to be very high based on based on a specific tool. And um, uh, so uh, another um, uh, kind of uh, type of effects, you have a whole genome indices. For example, if you have, uh, you're working with infinitesimal model, right? Uh, then uh, what you get, uh, you don't have a, a change in a specific allele frequency of, um, um, you know, some maybe limited number of SNPs, but what you get, you have a tiny uh, change of, of, of a frequency of infinitely many, uh, infinitely many alleles. So uh, in this case, that uh, for the models that assume, uh, uh, so um, uh, uh, you, know, uh, you know, focus on uh, uh, so uh, specific alleles, you will not find any signals. So in this case, uh, the GWAS will will be will be useless. So for those traits, it's uh, uh, it's it's better to run like uh, you know uh, maybe based on unmixture vectors, based on uh, principal component analysis, maybe it's on some aggregated scores. So uh, for uh, and um, then uh, all the different results should be added together and uh, the method is noted. But uh, you know, uh, uh, blab uh, is used for one thing, lasso is good for another thing, but uh, there is no commonly best method. And uh, uh, you know, of course, there are also uh, uh, tools are not, so for this tool is not going to go well if, uh, uh, um, uh, polyploidy issues for some uh, uh, polyploidy is not um, is, uh, you know it's going to it's going to mess things up so uh yeah so uh, there is no perfect tools but uh if you uh, run all uh, all like 10 uh, 20 different tools uh, for for each trade uh then uh using the ensemble approach that's uh, you, you you'll find something More questions? Guys, uh, show us your results. So um, uh, what I would like you to please type which trait you are going to try. So choose a trait. So we are giving you homework. You would but I would, I would like to give the... you a jump start because you give you a jump start. You can so if you decide to do something else, I can show you. I can give you a start. But uh, please uh, try. Uh, tell me which one you want to try. So look at uh, look at the uh, the. Uh, file with phenotypes and, they, uh, and tell me what is interesting. Because now we have developed everything, it will be very quick for us to add one more, to analyze one more. It will be almost instantaneous. Type your suggestions.
But Tatiana, maybe for those yeah, coming uh, from biology, it's better to explain again the model, the statistical model. Is it possible to do so in like, Okay, okay. Uh, so um, we have left. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Only so they can understand and yeah, the other like statistician and data scientists okay. so mm -hmm. they can understand better statistic okay. behind she was. Okay, okay. Okay, so I think uh, we can talk about uh, maybe this plot. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, uh, in the gene was, uh, what is, um, uh, what we are trying to do, we are trying to find positions that are sufficiently associated with the trait of interest. Okay, so, um, uh, what we can do, uh, so there are maybe uh, maybe diseases, they may be, um, uh, uh, you know, conditions, we get adaptations, and uh, at the end, I have tons of presentations here. Okay. Okay. So the, uh, this is uh, interesting. Interesting data set um, uh, that was just uh, we got today uh, in the uh, in the chat. Uh, uh, they found uh, sufficient associations between uh, SNPs on the genome and uh, severity of COVID. Okay. So um, what uh, what does it mean? So uh, 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 what we assume our now model, so uh, it, 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 is a, it is hypothesis testing, right? So uh, your, uh, when you do hypothesis testing, you have uh, two models, you have now and alternative. So your now hypothesis that things are not related, right? So you can have uh, any uh, variety, but uh, it just doesn't have effect on, on the phenotype. But your, um, uh, Alternative hypothesis that uh, uh, there is a uh, there is an influence of um, uh, the SNP onto the final value, and so what are we using? So what are we using? Let me go back. Actually, here. Okay. So we have uh, we have this model, right? And why? is our response variable, it's our phenotype, okay? And uh, our um, uh, in the equation is uh, connecting uh, the phenotype with uh, G, uh, which are uh, our SNPs, right? And X, what it gives you the um, sort of design matrix, it gives you the strength of the influence. For example, if uh, uh, X is going to be uh, uh, close to zero, right? Then it means that this position, this team, does not affect the phenotype. If X is large and uh, coefficient is large and positive, it means that this particular SNP has a, a positive effect on phenotype. For example, if Y is a height of a plant, weight of a grain, and if the coefficient in front of G is large, right? So then this particular genotype has a positive effect on the increase of a grain. And if it's uh, minus, then it means uh, it is reducing it, right? So that's, uh, you, have, you have those coefficients. And um, uh, so as you know, when you uh, do uh, any, any kind of linear modeling, you uh, uh, run the model, you can find the coefficients, but also then uh, you do um, a hypothesis testing. How strong is the, uh, how strong is the influence, how significant, how statistically significant it is. And, uh, uh, so uh, you uh, in, in, and in this process you calculate p value and p value is telling us uh, how consistent is our model with the null and our null is assumption that it's not important okay so and if p value is small 
and the log p value, that's all in the value, large, okay, uh, then uh, it means that this position and that this snip is important for the phenotype, okay, that we are studying. And of course, uh, looking, putting different y's, I means diff putting different phenotypes is going to give us different values. So going to uh, pick up different, uh, different snips, okay? So this is a very hand-waving explanation for non-statisticians. So um, uh, since um, uh, uh, you guys are, um, uh, so they are not suggesting anything. So I guess there is one question here. Okay. okay. Uh, so um, what I would like to do, uh, maybe in a, a take maybe a couple more minutes and show you how to change the code in order to uh, uh, do the same thing for different phenotype. Okay. So let me share the R screen again. Okay, do you see my R studio? Guys, yes. do you see my R studio? Yes. Yeah, okay. So um, the only thing that you'll need to, because uh, you have the, the access to the script, the only thing that you need to, uh, need to change, right? Uh, is, uh, uh, on a line 69, okay? Because is it here when you change uh, uh, the, the component? So now, guys, uh, what I would like you to do, please type here, okay? Okay, height, okay? So you're interested in height, okay? So uh, unless you have other suggestions, okay? So let's remove uh, and um, see what we have here. So if you put dollar sign, you can. Um, Plant height, okay? Let's put plant height as a phenotype. Okay. Okay, so as before, uh, we need to... Um, okay, uh, let's, uh, okay, we have to uh, redo the genome. Okay. Okay, redo the metrics. Okay. All right, we have map, move. Okay, create the object. Okay, so we have to call it differently. Let's go into K4. And K4. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can also um uh maybe do the four so we can Go here. And uh, Jivas will take maybe a minute or so.
And as soon as it's done, you're going to have a new plot, a new Manhattan plot that will show you uh, where the important uh, uh, positions for the height are. So um, what I suggest you do is just, um, uh, uh, because the only thing that you need to be changing, the only thing that you need to be changing is here on the line 69 of the code. You choose any of the traits and then, uh, and then run the code. Everything else is unchanged. So while it, it, it's uh, computing, guys, do you have any questions? So any of the, uh, so please uh, type here if any of the um, uh, packages didn't get installed. Guys, please ask questions while we're waiting for um for the plot to appear. Don't be shy, please ask questions. So it did appear for another minute. Yeah, we have two. We are not, we are not so far, we are not interrupted. So we are not, oh yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so guys, do you see the plot? Yes. Okay, so in this case, uh, uh, so where is the uh, important SNP? Guys, please tell me, please type in, uh, uh, in uh, uh, the chat. So where is the important SNP? Chromosome one, yes, yeah. So, um, uh, yes, yes. So you see the important snip was on chromosome one, okay? So, uh, and of course it can be um, totally artifact of the analysis. No one said that, you know, uh, that's why I would suggest that when you uh, do GWAS, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, advisable to do multiple methods because, you know, each method has its own biases. So, but in order to check uh, the, if it's uh, uh, real or not, uh, the uh, best way is to go to the SNP seq database. And the SNP seq database, um, uh, okay, I will uh, do a new share. Okay. Mm. Okay. All right, so uh, do you see the steam -seek database? Yes. Okay, so here, what we can do, we can check the phenotype. 
that's uh, that we are interested. In this case, we're using we're using plant height, right? And uh, so, so dwarf may be related because it's related to plant height, but it's slightly different phenotype. We can, but we can choose it. We can choose it anyway. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we can also look at uh, trade genes. Okay, there is no uh, uh, there is no height uh, per se, but what if you look here, right? So, oh yeah, this is actually very good, guys. So, so you see. Uh, at um, uh, there's a chromosome one. There is a set of genes that are related to um, height because they are dwarf, right? So this, uh, the name is different. The dwarf, but in you know, dwarf is a, is a short plant, so it is related to height. And we have a set of things here that are related to height. So this is perfect. We can even click and explore. And if it, if it loads, I hope it loads. No, it doesn't. Uh, but uh, let's uh, go back to uh, uh, our, uh, so we found that uh, the cluster of genes that are related uh, to, uh, associated with height, uh, this dwarf phenotype is located to on uh, chromosome one. And uh, you look here. Tatiana, we have only three minutes. Remaining. Yes. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. So here, I just our biological relation is super important. You see, there's a nice peak here showing at the end of a chromosome one. So in this case, uh, we have hope that what was found by GWAS is not some random effect. It is supported uh, by, uh, by investigations. So. Uh, what I would like you guys to do. Uh, so I would like you to uh, run this code for different phenotypes. Then go to the SNPSIC database and check if SNPSIC database supports or does not support uh, the location of important gene in this position. Okay? So... Uh, because uh, there may be two versions, either SNPSEQ uh, doesn't know about this yet, or it's a random effect, it's also possible. There is always a possibility uh, that uh, we uh, have uh, discovered something that we're not supposed to discover. There's always, it's always a possibility. Uh, because you know, uh, when we do hypothesis testing, there is always a chance that uh, the effect is truly random, but we think it is significant. There's always a possibility. So uh, please try to do this. and. Um, Send me an email. Uh, so uh, uh, my uh, email, I will uh, okay, get the share. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I don't see the whiteboard. Okay, but uh, uh, here, uh, uh, do uh, uh, everyone, does everyone have, um, uh, my, uh, my, my, yeah, my, we send them. Yeah, we will send them. Uh, yes, yeah. email. yes. Uh, so, uh, please with the uh, materials. Yeah. yeah. So, what I would like to receive from you guys, I would like to receive uh, either your results, everything is good, and uh, or if you um, get stuck with any of the part of the analysis, right? So, um, uh, I'm not able to uh, help you know each individual person now. But if you send me an email, if you ask me about how to fix one or another. I, I will be more than uh, more than happy to uh, to help you. And um, again, as as I mentioned, uh, this package is one of the earliest packages and the most uh, you know trivial. However, if you master this one, if you master one package, managing something that is uh, more important, managing something that is uh, uh, more difficult, it's going to be easy. So. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, treat it as a start, 
and try to understand it, understand the nuts and bolts of this package, and uh, then everything else is going to be is going to be very easy for you. Yes. So uh, thank you so thank much. You. And if you have questions, please, thank you, Tatiana, uh, for this email. Uh, this amazing. Yeah. So I will. I will. Uh, so I will fix. I will. I will, I will, I will fix the type, typos in the code and upload a new version of the script because I found some typos there. I'll upload the new version of the script and uh, please download the new version and play with the new version. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, Tatiana, thank for you so much. amazing thank workshop. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Please feel free to call me. Please feel free to call me uh, and uh, ask questions. So, uh, Tatiana would, would like to ask you if it's okay to share the recording. On absolutely, our... absolutely. Yes, yes. You okay, can, you can share the recording. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, we'll be sending you that, dear participants. Yeah. So, we'll, I would like also to okay, let you then. know about uh, our next meetup that will be held uh, on the next Tuesday and which will be served as the, an overview of the R package, uh, GG stats plot. Uh, so, uh, so GG stats plot is uh, an extension of the famous R package GG plot 2. So it creates graphics with details from uh, statistical tests included in the plot themselves. So we'll be pleased to uh, be hosting uh, Indrajit, uh, the main creator of uh, this incredible R package. So we'll be really happy if you join us. So I will leave the meetup link and uh, the Google form link uh, for registration in uh, the chat. Thank you. And we would like uh, really to thank uh, Tatiana for this amazing uh, workshop. It was really, yeah, I learned a lot during this workshop and I hope you did the same. Yeah. So you okay. have so the if you, if you want to use ggplot, yeah. uh, you know you can use the example the word map with uh, you know phenotypes. You can use it for the ggplot example. Yeah. Ah, okay, that would great. Be great. Yeah. yeah, it will be great. Yeah. So because thank you very yeah, much. It's amazing thank how you. to put the phenotypes there. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, thank Tatiana. You for, I, and, yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, we have so.